because spiritually what's more dangerous, you know, a guy who takes your physical money or a guy who spiritually misleads you and you end up going to hell for it. Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron. This is Scott. This is Tucker. I decided to go alphabetically today. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Um, this episode, we're talking about false gospels. Um, you know, we've talked, I guess, two episodes ago. We talked about which church to join or really which church in the Bible do you read about and how are people added to it? And we talked in that about how, like, when you look in the world, there are thousands of yeah. different churches hundreds of different like big organized groups, denominations, and there's lots of like little smaller startup ones all over the world. And the reason they exist is normally because they don't teach the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, when you look in scripture, do you see that? And of course the answer is no. We talked about that two episodes ago. And so we'd say, okay, what about false gospels or, or false teachers? You know, what does the Bible say about it? Um, and we've got to acknowledge when we look at scripture that the apostles were warned about false gospels. Yeah. I mean, Jesus himself warned and said, there are false teachings that were going to come. Um, you know, what do you think about when we think about that topic? What are some passages that just, I guess, jump out at you that whether it's Jesus or whether things that are in the epistles or, or acts, or I mean, really any of the new Testament. Well, we got acts 20, 28 through 29. Okay. It says, uh, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Um, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. So to me, I mean, I think in today's culture, we just think as long as you love Christ, then it doesn't really matter. It's not a salvation issue, mm -hmm. but it's like if they're being warned that there's the original mm -hmm. and then something's going to come mm -hmm. and it's going to be perverted. We got to pay attention. Yeah, it's interesting. You look to in verse 17 of Acts 20, it says from Miletus, he, it's talking about Paul, um, sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church, right? So he calls the leaders of the, in the new Testament, you didn't, you never had this one. Well, I take that back in third John, you had this one guy named Diotrephes who wanted to have the preeminence. He wanted to be the lead pastor, right? But that's not what scripture uh, prescribes scripture says a church should have a multiplicity two or more of yeah. elders the word elder pastor um, bishop they're all interchangeable right yeah what is it elder pastor bishop shepherd overseer yeah, yeah i mean technically the word shepherd presbyter. is the yeah presbyter um presbyteros that's yeah. that's the word here used of elders yeah um the greek word but the word pastor is latin for poimain the greek word is poimain the latin is pastor and the english is shepherd and the translators translated the greek poimain to English shepherd every time except Ephesians 4.11. That's actually the only time you find pastor, I believe, in the whole New Testament. Mm -hmm. So technically they should have changed it to shepherds there. But so that's what a pastor does is he shepherds. Mm -hmm. But 1 Timothy 3 gives qualifications for an elder that also fit a shepherd. So this idea of like a 27-year-old unmarried pastor or a female pastor is actually unbiblical if you look at 1 Timothy 3. So that's kind of a side note. But yeah. so Paul calls these elders of the church and warns them about what Tucker said. Yeah, that's who he's talking to. Yeah, yeah he's, he's talking, talking to the to leaders. The that's right. He's saying you need to take heed. Why? Because they're gonna have they're gonna have people who are gonna come, uh, who are gonna be like wolves. And look at verse thirty. Tell me, read verse thirty, Scott. And tell uh, me what's what's even crazier about that. Also, of your own selves shall men arise. And and yeah, that's where I was trying to get towards uh, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Of your own selves, of whose selves? Well, the elders. It's pointing back to that of the elders. There's going to be they're going to be men who are going to become leaders in the church, who are going to be corrupt, mm -hmm. and they're going to do this as if they're a wolf coming in and and feeding on the flock. Mm -hmm. They're gonna they're gonna use the flock for their own self gain. They're gonna speak perverse things and they're gonna draw away people to they're gonna follow them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can look at the world today and see the way that everything is split off, mm -hmm. the way everybody went, mm -hmm. the the fact that denominations exist in the first place. I mean, that started way back in what? I mean, you could make an argument that it started very early in the in the one hundreds, two hundreds, right? Yeah, Judaizers, Gnostics, all those different groups. Yeah. yeah, certainly it became very official um, by you know I don't know third century something mm -hmm. like that, the three hundreds, and you yeah. have the beginnings of what became later Catholicism mm -hmm. and the bishops trying to fight for power and influence over the cities. First mm -hmm. it was, there was a head elder and then all of a sudden, well, he was a bishop or a leader over mm -hmm. multiple congregations. So then you had the citywide bishops and they were drawing people after them mm -hmm. so that they could feed off of those people mm -hmm. and for their power, for their influence, for their money, for whatever it may be. 
And I mean, that's exactly what you see happen. That's where we get to where we are. Ultimately, that's where it comes from. And when you say that, it makes it such, you know, it says, like you said, among yourselves, men will rise up to draw away, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after themselves. It always like is interesting to me. Like I can think of one example. I won't mention names when I was in North Carolina and uh, I lived in Raleigh and there's like what, I don't know, 500 churches of different ones in, in Raleigh of different denominations and all this. And this guy told me once that he was trying to get me to come, I guess, recruit me. And he told me that God called him to come and, and plant a church in Raleigh. And I thought, God called you to come plant a church where there's 500 already. Like, seems to me God wants you to go plant one like in the deep, dark heart of Africa or the Middle East where there's not a congregation. Yeah, because you're talking to somebody who would say, well, most people are okay. Like, you know, they they were denominational in their thinking. Yeah, right? yeah, they were. Yeah, right. and they basically think that, yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good, really good point. They thought that all those other churches were fine. Right. But it was like, okay, well then why did you come and set your own up? And that's the issue when you say it's, you know, my church. Sometimes we use the terminology, hey, you know, like what does your church teach? I know it's not your church, it's Christ's church. But what I'm saying is, why do you have a guy who, and I, let me, I guess, bring it all back draw away disciples after themselves. I meet people all the time that want to start their own church. Why? Because they want to be the leader. They want things to revolve around them. They don't ever look at scripture and say, well, look, actually this church over here is following the scriptural pattern. I'm going to go become a member there. They're like, no, I want my own church. I want to be the leader. I want to be the lead pastor. I want to call the shots. And it's like, we still see that today. And then look at verse 31. This is how important it is. Therefore, watch and remember for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone day and night with tears. Is this a big deal to Paul? Yeah. For three years, he's telling these elders in Ephesus, he's warning you day and night with tears. It's a big deal. And unfortunately we live in a, uh, like a world today that sometimes doesn't think it's that big of a deal. If you teach something different than what the Bible taught, like, yeah, that might not be right. Or yeah, I understand what you're saying, but you know, we just, we should all respect our different opinions and agree to disagree. It's like about some things. Yeah. But not about yeah. the gospel. Well, it's like, you know, when you, when you go to make changes to the gospel, what, is, what does he say about it over in Galatians? Yeah, that you know what? Let's go there. Because <laughs> that's sort of, we're talking about false gospels. That's a perfect one. Do you have it already? Yeah. You want to uh, read it? One, six through nine. Yeah. It says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that have called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And he says, of course, but though we, or an angel of heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. there's, there's people who are going to pervert it. They're not just going to say, hey, why don't we believe in Buddhism or Hinduism? Mm -hmm. They're going to take a lot of elements from the Bible. They're going to make, they're going to make statements that are true mm -hmm. and they're going to sprinkle in perversion with it. They're mm -hmm. going to twist it to be something other than itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we use the word pervert or perversion almost explicitly for, or exclusively rather for sexual yeah. issues today. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're reading this in the Bible, it's just talking about, you're going to take something that's good and holy and right and the way it's supposed to be. And you're going to turn it a little bit. Yeah. You're going to change something about it. You're going to add something in that yeah. shouldn't be there. It's the idea of, uh, I, I suppose, I'm looking the, up the word where the leaven of the Pharisees or yeah. something like that. It's mm. the idea that there's going to be a little something that gets in here and it's going to work its way through. It's, yeah. it's not that you don't maintain some of the structure of the original, but you've added these other things that have seeded their way through and they've changed it into something else. You know, I think, I think, I think this is a, uh, which is why he says it's not another. Well, it's funny. It's what you said. You said, twist it and turn it. Mm -hmm. I just looked up the words. It's at least the same root in that verse there. Those who pervert the gospel, you said they twist it right. Mm -hmm. Um, in second Peter three sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same root yeah. word. Speaking, it says, Paul, it's verse 15, in all his epistles, speaking of those things in which some things are hard to understand. There are some things in scripture that are more difficult than others, They're right? They're going to rest. Them. They're going to, which untaught and unstable people twist, rest. It's the same Greek word or the root word, which is strepho to turn, right? Yeah. To their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures. So you're going to have these false teachers who take scripture and do what to it? They yeah. twist it to fit it. to fit their mold, to fit what they want it to teach. Uh, we mentioned in an earlier program, you know, it's like the devil can quote scripture. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that can quote scripture mm -hmm. and they will. And mm -hmm. it's not that the scripture doesn't say it. Mm -hmm. It's not that the scripture isn't true. It's how they're trying to make application of it. Absolutely. That's what's yeah. false. They twist it into something else. 
it's pointing this direction and they try to say, no, let me point you over here instead yeah. and make this mean something else. And in that process, they perverted it. They're going to lead people astray. They're going to be that wolf that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. They're going to take advantage of the church and they're going to do it to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. And yeah. unfortunately, there are there are passages that make it clear that if we follow those people into error, that we'll condemn ourselves as well. That's right. That's right. And yeah, in one of the previous episodes we filmed recently, <clears throat> I had shared the story about how the two ladies that were from the Baptist church and then the pastor that came to my house. And when I was talking to the pastor, and I use that word in terms of what they describe it as, mm -hmm. but, you know, I was like, well, you're choosing to follow that that doctrine. And I was like, would you go be a Catholic or a Methodist? And he said, well, you know, they, they get some things right, but some of it's false. I was like, so what you're saying is that you do see that there's some false doctrine in their beliefs. That's so what I'm saying is like, if, if the scriptures tell, and if we believe that the Holy Spirit wrote this, like, you know, it's absolute truth. It's like, then if it's talked about there being just one gospel or one doctrine, I'm like, why is it that we like, can we not just simply just go back to that? Just like in first Corinthians uh, chapter one, just talking about like, yeah. Um, Let's see, uh, number verse 12, like what I mean is that each of one of you says, I follow Paul and Apollos and Cephas, or I follow Christ. It's like, is Christ divided or was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And, you know, it, you know, it, yeah, they're fallen humans. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they were inspired. We said that before, right? Yeah. Like if Paul's saying, Hey, when you, and, and later in chapter three and four, it talks about figuratively, I've conver conv uh, convert, conferred, I think that's what he says, <laughs> this to these men. Were they really following Paul, Apollos, Cephas, or is he just saying, you're following these other guys, but I'm not going to name them. I'm just going to say, even if you were following Paul, Apollos, and Cephas, right? Um, either way, he's saying that's wrong. And yeah. Cephas is Peter. Paul's an apostle. Cephas is an apostle. Apollos is likely have miraculous gifts given to him by the hands of an apostle, Acts 8, 18, and is out preaching the gospel now. So that's wrong, even if you follow those men, yeah. let alone some uninspired guy, you know, who, what? went to school for a few years. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why we always have for the last, what, 27 episodes in season one. And who knows what this episode is? 20s, maybe <laughs> we've always encouraged you check the scriptures. If we don't make a good enough case that convinces you reject it. Don't ever say, well, they got a good podcast and they're on a cool set or something like that. Therefore they yeah. know what they're talking about. Check it against scripture. Right. You know, this act exactly. 17, 11, they're listening to Paul and they're mm -hmm. checking him out. First John four, four, yeah. one beloved, right. believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they're of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Mm -hmm. Spirit doesn't mean like, you know, a ghost or no. a metaphysical thing like no. that. It's talking about the teachers, the yeah, mind, try, yeah. try the people, try the doctrine, compare mm -hmm. it to what you see in the scripture. Mm -hmm. And of course, in this case, they're, they're going to, they're going to try these spirits. They're going to try these prophets according to what, they have revealed to them at that point. That's we right. fortunately have everything that we That's need. That's right. Right? Jude 3, we talked about that in the, another yeah. episode. Well, you know, so I've had so like when you're talking, I have this idea in this. You know, one thing in Galatians 1, 6 through 9, it says, even if an angel hmm. preaches to you, right? I think it's yeah. interesting when you look at false gospels, um, Mormonism. Mormonism says the truth was lost and who came back and gave them a vision? The angel Moroni. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was trying to remember. I wanted yeah. to say like Marconi. I was like, that's yeah. not right. The angel Moroni. Moroni. So yeah. literally Joseph Smith says, Hey, an angel came to me and said that the true gospel is lost and I'm restoring the true one. Isn't that what the devil would say? Yeah. Like yeah. even if an angel comes to you, I actually think, uh, I haven't studied Islam as in depth in the uh, recently, but, um, we have a good Islam series that I think Dave Miller did that will be in the link tree. We also have a Mormonism series that will be in the link tree. But that is what Islam has in his roots. Yeah. Wasn't well. it like an angel came to him in a tent in a, a cave? <laughs> yeah. Um, he, I mean the, the premise of it is exactly the same as what Mormonism is. Mm -hmm. Well, the scriptures became corrupt. We didn't have the pure word of God anymore. He's meditating an angel visits when I think he might say yeah. it was like Gabriel or somebody yeah. like that. But, yeah. And then he revealed to him these things and yeah. he, he's the last, the great prophet or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Right. Because they still accept in, in, in their canon of what they use, mm -hmm. they have the gospels, mm -hmm. but they always say, yeah, read them. They're good. But as long as they don't contradict what the Quran says, the Quran yeah. is the pure word of God. It yeah. hasn't been tainted. So wherever you see a contradiction in the gospels, just disregard it. Well, and I think actually, you know, in John 16, well, 14 through 17, but John 16, 12 through 13, 15, 12 through 15. I say the gospel. I think they reject John. But, okay. But well, Matthew it's Mark, interesting because I think it was maybe uh, when I used to, I studied in, uh, Islam really in depth. My, my Quran up there, it's all highlighted and notated. But I remember in that study that I found that maybe one of Muhammad's like uncle or somebody after him said that the promise that Jesus said he had to go away so that the comforter, the Holy Spirit could come. They said like Muhammad was that as opposed to what the gospels say. 
uh, which in the book of Acts is that that came to the apostles and it guided them into all truth. Yeah. But I guess the gist of it, we'll have more videos in the link tree for you to watch about these two different groups. But both of those false gospels came from an angel, hypothetically, right? Which yeah. I don't think they did. But even if they did, Paul says, don't believe it, right? Jude 3, the faith has been once delivered. And the second thought I had is you talk about wolves. What did Jesus say, right? Okay, somebody may be sitting at home and say, man, these guys sound like they know what they're talking about, right? Let's look, look at Matthew seven fifteen. whoever's got it. Matthew seven fifteen. Did Jesus say, false teachers are going to come to you and they're going to look just like wolves. You're going to be able to look at them and know right then that guy's a false teacher. What did Jesus say in Matthew seven fifteen? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. They come to you in sheep's clothing. What do they look like on the outside? Sheep. A sheep. Mm -hmm. They look like good and innocent and pure people just like you. Yep. They look like, and maybe, I, maybe they I are just like you. I'm assuming a lot of us, assuming right? that you're innocent. assuming yeah. that we're trying no, I, exactly. I to be like God wants us to be. Yeah. So he's saying, when you look at them, they look nice. Mm -hmm. They look like true prophets. They look like men of God. They, and honestly, they may be just straight up deceived and they may be trying to be honest. Right. Right. But it says, when you look at them, they have sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're what? Inwardly ravenous, ravenous wolves. Ravenous wolves. That's yeah. it. That's why we say you, you, you don't know if it's the first time you've seen this podcast. You don't know that that's not us. Yeah, that's right. True. That's true. They yeah. are there to eat you. Yes, right. And the only way you for their own benefit. And what's the only way that you can tell whether we or anybody else are wolves in sheep's clothing or not? Well, for yeah, 16. No, let's read that. Yeah, yeah. 16. And, and I, I think it's good to go ahead and finish down to where it says in 20. I agree. Quick. It says you go shall ahead. know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So every kind of tree is going to bear its own fruit. Mm -hmm. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth or bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to know whether someone's teaching the truth. In this context, at least the scripture, I'm talking about what's a fruit. I think a fruit is if you have a true fruit is the true truth of the tr the doc true truth, the truth or doctrine. You have to find somebody that teaches that. How are you going to know that? You have to dive down and dig into it. You know, yeah. some people say, well, uh, this guy bears good fruit because he's a nice guy and he does nice things for people. I know atheists that are nice people and do nice things for people. Well, this guy, you know, he, he uses the Bible. I, the devil's quoted scripture, right? You have to dig into scripture and say, is yeah. everything this guy's saying match up with this book? And you got to be diligent. I mean, you can't just say, well, you sit in your, if you go to church on a Sunday, it's the assembly and you're sitting there in services and you don't bring your Bible and the guy's just quoting stuff and you're up there just listening and saying, man, all right, it's on screen. It's a Bible verse. Yeah, you know what? Right. I mean, all right. I, I like that. And that's, that's not, good. yeah. I mean, absolutely. You're going to check their fruit by what they say mm -hmm. and see if it measures up to scripture. Mm -hmm. But even further more than that, and I, do, I, I think if you keep on reading in that same passage mm -hmm. in verse 22, He's continuing with these same kind of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I'll profess to them, I never knew you depart from me, you that work iniquity. Why? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, Does them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon the, uh, upon the rock. That's right. So, so who is the can, person? Yep. You can have somebody, there's a couple of ways you can have it happen. Mm -hmm. They can be saying the right things. Mm -hmm not doing the right things. Mm -hmm. So you can look at their fruit in their life. Mm -hmm. He can talk a big talk, but if you have a person who's willing to go out and their fruit is corruption or manipulation mm -hmm. or lies mm -hmm. or uh, extortion or embezzlement or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you, you know that man. Those would be easy ones to yeah, identify. Those are the easy ones, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and it can be true the other way too. You know, maybe he's a really nice guy, but he's telling you things that aren't in the scripture. Yeah. I mean, you can know that to be true yeah. by looking into the perfect law of liberty, looking into that's right. God's holy word and comparing yeah. what he has to say to yeah. it. So there's two ways you can look at it and you'll know them by those fruits. Because spiritually, what's more dangerous? You know, a guy who takes your physical money or a guy who spiritually misleads you and you end up going to hell for it. Like we'd say like, oh, that guy embezzled money. He's such a crook. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm not trying to be offensive, but like, okay, you took my physical money. Yeah, you're probably getting arrested. But like, if you're teaching me spiritual untruths, that's got like eternal consequences, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. So as a world, in a world that's really a lot of times not that concerned with spiritual error, they're like, oh, no, man, don't take my money. Yeah. But it's like, I'm like, if I had to choose between the two, which luckily I don't think I have to choose between the two, take my money, dude. 
but yeah. don't teach me something that's untrue from the scriptures, you know? Like and that's you, what ultimately, yeah. like you just said, sorry, Tucker, oh, no, you're good, you're Scott, and, uh, Scott and Aaron show <laughs> um, or Aaron. Then yeah. Anyway, verse 21, you talked about that. The one that does the will of my father, mm-hmm. they'll say, Lord, we did all these religious things. We cast out demons. We w- did wonders. We prophesied in your name. I never knew you. You work lawlessness. Why? You didn't do what God told you to do. Mm-hmm. Where? In, in scripture, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so check out us. Don't, mm-hmm. even yeah. if you've been watching this podcast for two years, don't take everything we say as gospel truth, unless we give you book, chapter, and verse. So you can go that's check right. it yourself. That yeah. verse actually scared me when I first read it four years ago, but yeah, it ought to scare, it ought to scare everybody even today, even yeah. us, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. listen to always check us. Um, I think it's cool. Like when I first heard about like the early writers, when you talked about that, you can go back and kind of see, you know, they're not inspired or anything, but just sure. to see what history shows. Mm-hmm. But like when you look back in church history, not only are people breaking away to form their own church, but the people are also trying to say, Hey, let's get back to the original. Yeah. And so I think that's what we're saying is like, if you're listening and driving we're saying, don't like, we're not trying to get you to join any other church. We're saying like, if Jesus literally built his, like to become his bride, mm-hmm. why would he have like, I hate to say like, go sleep around like with other false yeah. teachings. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, like literally, and we wrote down second Peter two, one, mm-hmm. but false pro- prophets are also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing up themselves swift destruction to um, secretly bring it in. You know, yeah. they're like quietly secret. Maybe they don't even show it to you at first, but they'll bring in heresies, which <laughs> means division. I don't even think a lot of this, like <clears throat> that people are wolves. I don't even know if people realize that they're wolves sometimes. Because I don't think they do. There's, I have some, yeah, there's some amazing people in my past that, yeah. and they're like wonderful. But looking back, it's like, even though that they're amazing people and they had, they bared some good fruit in mm-hmm. certain ways, um, the teaching doesn't match. And that's the, mm-hmm. you have to set aside all that stuff and say, okay, I can literally be just Jesus's and, and cause in our culture, we're so used to all the divisions. We're mm-hmm. just used to it. Like as long as you love Christ, you can go anywhere. Well, and I think too, like sometimes people think that that fruit there means, you know, oh, well he does nice things for people. I mean, I know atheists who do nice things for people. Does that mean they're bearing good fruit? I mean, I don't think that's the context of fruit of it's talking about there. Right. And so like what Tucker talked about is study the real one. Like, look at the new Testament church. And how are you going to know that if you go to church on Sunday and you listen to this guy on stage and you don't have your Bible and you just sit there and you're like, okay, yeah, I like that verse. If you haven't studied it in depth and spent time in it on your own, how are you going to know whether what he's saying yeah, is out I'm of context? Well, he says corrupt fruit. Uh, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is if you sit in there and you don't know what the book of Ephesians is even about, cause you've never read the whole thing from beginning to end and you never studied it and said, you know, whenever a guy quotes a passage from Ephesians, how are you going to even know like, that's not, that's out of context. You're not going to know. You literally won't. It's like you, there's no way for you to know unless you study it for yourself. That's one yeah. of the things we try to provide resources for you, not just to watch us, but to say, Hey, look, if you like this topic, dive in deeper here, go to the podcast yeah. resource page, watch this video series, watch this video series, watch this books of the Bible on the app verse by verse study through the whole book, you know? Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out and get answers to life's biggest questions. So we got about six minutes. <laughs> My mic stand's blocking the timer. Six minutes. To be honest Let's- with you, I started a minute late. So you started a minute yeah, late? Yeah, we, we got about six minutes. Does that mean we have five minutes left? Maybe. If you start a minute late. Okay. Let's talk about some false gospels, right? In the first century church, Paul had to deal with this. Um, you know, Galatians 2, 16, Acts chapter 15. You can read those for yourself. Paul dealt with this idea of these Christians who were formerly Jews that said to be a Christian, you have to add, you have to add the law of Moses. You have to add circumcision. Paul rebuked that. That's actually what Galatians is, is being written against, which is kind of interesting. Those were people who were true Christians that were adding something to the gospel. They were adding circumcision, to the law of Moses. And Paul says, this is another gospel. So by adding something can be another, can also be another if you take it away. It's also interesting that that was in the Bible. They yeah. were adding things that were in the Bible. Yes. Just something that had been done away with. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, exactly. That's I like mean, today. Okay. Yeah. What's an example of that today? People that try to bind the Sabbath on a Christian. Hey, you have to obey the Sabbath yeah. to be a faithful Christian. No, the Sabbath was a part of the 10 commandments. It was never instructed before the 10 commandments to the people that didn't come out of Egypt and is done away with Colossians 2, 14 through 18, right? 
Romans. That's interesting because we just yeah. talked about Abraham. Like, yeah. Did Abraham get the Sabbath? No. no. They'll try Why? to tell you he did, but he didn't. The, the Bible doesn't say that. They yeah. twist a lot of stuff. So yeah, I mean, if you were to say you have to be a Christian and keep the Sabbath to be right with, with God, that would be the same thing as they were doing in Galatians 1. If you say you have to be a Christian, but also have to circumcise your kid for a religious reason, then that would be the same thing Paul's dealing with in Galatians chapter one yep. and throughout the new Testament, right? Let's talk about some modern ones. Mm -hmm. um, what are some false gospels that we see in our world today? Probably the most obvious one that even a lot of people in the world would recognize is a uh, prosperity gospel. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. The closer you get to God, the, the more money you get, but dictionary.com said a modern version or according to some perversion of the gospel, according to which the full blessings of God available to those who approach him in faith and obedience include wealth, health, and power. Like, Hey, you become a Christian. Then all of a sudden God's gonna, um, you know, bring you a lot of money. That reminds me a lot of like first Timothy six, five perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Yeah. That's From a good such one. withdraw thyself, withdraw thyself gains yeah. a means of godliness. That's the gist of prosperity gospel is, Hey, if God loves you, he'll give you money and fame and wealth. And I always think you it's funny. Name it and claim it, man. name it and claim it. That's right. You know, and I see Joel Osteen do this all the time. God has a future for your business and your this sort of thing. And I'm sitting there thinking like, really, is that what Paul said? Is that what Paul said uh, in, in Philippians four, 11, through 12, Paul says, not that I speak in regard to need because I'm a millionaire because I'm an apostle. No, for I have learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to be abased, how to abound everywhere in all things I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer need. In fact, in Philippians 4, 15, he talks about how that church was the first one to partner with him, right? I mean, look at Jesus, Matthew 8, 20, the prosperity gospel. This is really what Jesus said, right? I've got this giant mansion. No, Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was born to a poor family in a yeah. small village that literally when they went up to make their offering, their sacrifice, they had to do what turtle doves or pigeons because they couldn't yeah. afford yeah. The, the more expensive yeah. animal. Yeah. I mean, the most God promises you is what some clothes on your back and he'll try to find a way to get you some food. Yeah. And that's even generic. That's right. You know, that's kind of more like a proverb. Yeah. There are situations where people were being persecuted where they had those things taken away. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not, you're not becoming a Christian to get rich here. No. So when someone yeah. says, Hey, if, if God really loves you, he'll give you all these things. False. That's false gospel. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll have more information yeah. on that on the resource page. Two minutes left. What's another one? This, this one I think is one of the biggest one in America and really the world. And it's the idea that all you have to do is believe, That's right? It. Sometimes people call it easy believism. Mm -hmm. Some people, if you call it easy believism. They think you're being offensive because they believe it. But the fact of the matter is the fairy, idea, the fairy tale gospel, just believe, just believe yeah. <laughs> Disney. Yeah. Um, I the idea, <laughs> the idea that all a person has to do is simply believe. Yeah. If you believe Jesus is Lord and accept him in your heart and you don't have to do anything else to be washed by the blood. That's a, I'm such a false gospel. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this a lot. A lot of people are taught this and maybe if you're watching it and you think we're wrong, reach out. Like, you can challenge me. I'm, we will, we're happy to discuss it with you. We won't get angry at you. But like, how many verses do you need? John 12, 42, right? Nevertheless, even among many of the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They didn't, they believed in him. Some people try to say, well, believed in and believed on is different. No, it's not. It's exactly the same. Yeah. I can show and you I both. And I mean, it's like we talked about that passage earlier, you know, not everyone mm -hmm. said it to them to me, Lord, Lord. I mean, those are people, number one, those Bingo. are people that believed and they did something about mm -hmm. it, but what they did was not what he told them to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. So there's more than just believing and there's more than just doing. You got to right. do what God tells you to do. That's right. I mean, yeah. I mean, Acts, you know, Paul in first Timothy four, uh, first Timothy one, 14 through 16, he said in verses 15 and 16, I think he was a pattern, a pattern. I don't have any problem with the word pattern theology, Romans six seventeen. you obeyed from the heart, that pattern of pattern. The new Testament says a pattern. Mm -hmm. First Timothy one, 14 through 16, Paul talks about, um, he was a guy, it was a pattern to all those who would come after him to believe on, on God for eternal life, believe on him. It says pattern. Paul was a pattern. Paul met Jesus, called him Lord, prayed for three days, fasted for three days, was obedient to God, went to the city, did all these things. And yet he was told, what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Just believing is not enough. I'm sorry. You could go to passages like Acts 16, 30 and 31. Hey, what must we do to be saved? Believe. And then they stop there. No, keep going. There's more to that story. And you have to take scripture as a whole. Um, we've already dealt with Calvinism in some other episodes. And yeah. at the end of this season, we actually have a surprise coming up, yeah. um, answering a video that was made in response to ours. Yeah. So we'll be, we'll be doing a little bit of a three or four part series on that. Um, any other ones you guys can think of? 
There's lots of other ones. If you have questions about, hey, is this a false gospel? That's nope. our timer to stop. <laughs> I um, it, but it didn't mute the timer. That's okay. So. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish up. So if you have any other ones that you're not sure if it's a false gospel or an idea, reach out to us at Authentic Christian Podcast, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for hanging with us. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today.